here once again, and that's why I'm making my annual school-related video. Okay, so I've only made one school-related video before, but it was around this time, so technically, it's still annual. <laughs> Anyways, in this video, I'll be sharing my favorite from kind of tips, extensions, or websites that I really enjoy using um, as a student. It's for students. <laughs> and I personally enjoy watching these videos and um, that's why I decided to make one and just dump all of my favorite kind of resources in the hopes that at least one of them will be useful to someone because I know that sometimes these videos were useful to me. So yeah, that's what this video is gonna be and let's get right into it. These are my top five uh, websites, extensions, or tips for Chrome plus one bonus app that's kind of like on the side at the end, stick around if you're interested, but it's not related <laughs> to these. So let's get right into it. The first one is gonna be the Chrome tip. I'm calling it a tip, but this is something that most people probably already know, but I just want to put this in here in case you don't know, you're that one person that doesn't know. But Chrome allows you to create different kind of accounts or uh, profiles, and I think it, it was probably intended for people who share the same computer. But I personally use this to separate my like university stuff from my like personal stuff. And the reason I'm putting this in here as a tip is, okay, first of all, it's really nice to have it separate, but I found that over time having the separate university browser kind of made it so that I procrastinated less because I only opened school-related websites on it. And so I found that over time, it kind of became a shift in mindset. If this browser open it's like work time obviously you could just open another chrome profile and you know <laughs> be distracted on that or you know just pull out your phone or just take it from off your desk but i just found that it was a nice like shift in mindset if this is open it's work and when it's closed it's not work you can try it out you know there's really no harm you can always delete the account later if you don't like it but i personally found that it was really helpful for me so i'm putting this here that's tip number one okay tip number two honestly I think almost every single course that I've taken has required me to write some sort of essay and this is why I'm including this because for me this was really like a, a, a lifesaver kind of thing or well yeah it was like a life improvement <laughs> let's put it like a little less dramatically but yeah so this one is called we weaver highlighter and there's a lot of other ones that you could use this is just the one that I've used and I've liked so I'm including it but basically the way this works is any website you're on you can highlight any sentence that you like when you have this uh, extension active and we have like I think five colors you can highlight with in color code you can also leave a comment related to what you highlighted so for example if I'm reading an article for an essay and I read a sentence that I'm like okay I really want to use this idea somewhere in this essay whether it's the first paragraph or whatever I can highlight it I can write a comment this is a great idea for the fourth paragraph I can do it like something like this or I can expand on this idea in this way and I have it highlighted and the way it works is that we have a highlighter has a dashboard where it will save all these highlights with the website it was highlighted from and the comments that you made and and you can also save it by like project. So if I'm working on three essays, I can have three separate kind of like lists of highlights and websites that I used. And the reason I like this is first there's color coding. So you can have it based on like this is an idea I want to use, this is something I want to reference or something like that. I don't know how you, however you want to color code it. But I found that like if I'm writing an essay, I'm reading like 20 articles and I'm using them to formulate an idea for an assignment. And I'm gonna have to reference these later. So <laughs> if I'm reading 20, I'm not gonna remember what I read where and what I thought about each one. So having it highlighted, saved in one place with like my ideas at the time is really helpful for then going back and formulating a plan for the essay or the assignment and just remembering what idea came from where. So later when I'm saying, oh, in this article by so-and-so, I know who so-and-so is. <laughs> Does that make sense? I think this is really helpful, but again, it's up to you whether you want to use it, if it's something that works in your personal workflow or not, but that's, Item number two. Moving on to the third resource. So this is kind of similar to the previous one in terms of like the use case. It's an extension called My Bib. And I actually think Slight This For Me also came out with an extension. So I will link both of them and you can see which one you like better. But the reason I'm including this is because I think since like I first learned about citations, I don't think I've ever like by hand done a single one. <laughs> and um, I've always used websites like Cite This For Me, but I found out about this extension and it's kind of like the next level kind of thing because usually if you want to use Cite This For Me, the website, you would copy the link of whatever you want to reference, paste it, and then follow the steps. But basically the one that I've used, which is my bib, what it allows you to do is whatever website you're on, you just click on the extension and you add the citation to your bibliography. And you'll do this for all the papers or websites or whatever you want to include. And then at the end, when you're done and you want to add the bibliography or the reference list or whatever to your paper, you can just download it and paste it in. So it just makes it a little bit easier where you don't have to copy the link and paste it. You just 
click one button. It's like a couple minute simplification. It really is just like a life improvement sort of thing. But I found that was really helpful because sometimes I forget to add paper. So this is a nice where I'm like, I'm reading an article, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely gonna use this, so I'll add it right away. And then if I don't end up using it, I can always remove it at the end. But it's nice to know that I have everything saved in one place. And I know that's for sure for my bib, it allows you to add references to like different um, projects. So you can have multiple projects and then just add it to whichever one you want. But in general, it's like a nice life improvement thing if you are in a field that requires essays and that kind of referencing. So yeah, that's um, resource number three. Moving on to number four. I think this is the one where like people are probably familiar with them, but I'm gonna put them for people who might not be, you know? I'm gonna call this like this study accompaniment slash music section. These are just a list of websites that I really like, plus one app. The ones that I personally like, I'm gonna put a list of kind of the popular ones, but the two websites that I really, really enjoy using, uh, the first one is I Miss My Cafe. It has a very like simplistic vibe. Um, I really like the aesthetics of it and I really like the noises they have. So I can use it on its own or I can play my own music like on a low volume in the background with these like cafe noises. So that's the first one. The second one I really like is Noisly. They have a free version and then you can pay for like a subscription, but I think the free sounds are really nice on their own. They have a randomized button so you can create like a random mix of noises. I think they also have a Pomodoro timer if you like to use that I personally don't, but it's there if you want it. And then one more I want to mention is an application, but it's really, really cute. It's called Virtual Cottage. And I don't really know how to explain it, but basically it's like this really cute visual thing where there's like someone studying, have a dog or a cat next to you while you're studying, and you can put in what you're working on and how long you want to work on it and have like a vowel ring when you're done, when your time's up. And then they also have lo-fi music plus like some sounds, I think there's rain. But yeah, it's just really cute. I, I This is like one where I don't think it's gonna make you more productive, at least personally for me. This is something that I only use when I just don't wanna do anything at all. And it's how I like get myself to do something. I'll put this on and I'll just like work a little and then stare at it a little and then work a little and stare at it. And it's just cute. You're just looking at it, it's like calming and the music's going and you have the like, rain and it gets me to do a little bit of work done. I don't know how helpful it'll end up being when you're like staring at it and then just working a little and you're staring but I think it's better than nothing so I'm gonna put this here I really enjoy using it in that like one case and then I'll have a couple more like popular websites that people have probably heard of or use linked and you can try those out I know like everyone has their own taste so you might like not like the ones that I mentioned but you might like some of these so I'm just gonna put those there but those aren't ones that I personally use and that's it for number four okay so moving on to the fifth resource and this one is a little different it's an extension but they also have a desktop app and they have like a free plan that you can use it's called toggle tracker and i know it's initially like when you look it up it's intended for businesses but if you completely ignore that aspect of it you can use it like purely as a time tracker and that's what i use it for and basically you have the extension on your bar and you can start it whenever you start working on something and it's basically just a timer and it tracks how long you've been working on it okay so the reason i personally like using this is because i like to keep track of how long i've been working on a task and that's because usually before i begin working on any task i have like a general idea of how long it'll take me to finish it so whether it's just like a small task like sending an email or if it's you know writing an essay or researching for an essay like writing an email will take me like 10 minutes <laughs> i have an issue with writing emails <laughs> okay that's not the point but knowing how long i have worked on something allows me to know how long i have left to finish it and this kind of helps me plan out my day or my week and how much i can get done in a day or in a week it just helps with planning in general but other than planning i find this is like a better way to motivate myself to get more done like rather than something like the pomodoro method which i personally don't like and that's because okay let's say I've been working on something for 30 minutes. I've like tracked it and I know it'll take me about an hour and a half to finish the whole thing. Then I know that I can convince myself, okay, I've been working for 30 minutes. Let's just work another 15 minutes to get to 45. And it's basically like I'm done half of the project, right? And I can take a break. And then, you know, I'll work for 15 minutes and it's in 45 minutes. And I'm like, okay, well it's 45 minutes. Why don't I work another 15 and I'll get to one hour. And it's like around one hour, you know, of work and I'm done for the day I'll just sleep at that and then I only have half an hour left like I only have to work another half hour later on at some point or it's like you're like bargaining with yourself like okay just do a little bit more just a little bit more and you just push it as far as you can and that's why I like it I don't know for me the reason one of the reasons I could go on forever on as to why I don't like the Pomodoro method personally but the main reason is like when I'm like just starting to get in the groove of working that's when the timer rings right and it's like oh you can take a break and of course like you can just not take the break but it's an excuse to stop working and of course I'm gonna take that excuse like um, am I dumb yeah I'm gonna take a 10 minute break or whatever I don't know, I find that like with this method, even if you don't use a tracker and you just look at the clock and you start at around like 10-ish, like 10.04, or say 10-ish, and you're working and you're working and you look back and it's 10.45. For me personally, I just find it easier to go, okay, well, I can, I can stay focused for another 15 minutes and take a break. Does that make sense? Okay, let's just 
I'm gonna start ranting, but if anything I said resonated with you or you thought it was like interesting or it was similar to how your learning style works or if you just want to try something different, honestly, you can get this extension or just next time you're gonna study, take your phone, start a timer or at the top of the page where you're studying, just put the time that you started and give it a shot. See how long you work on it, how long you stay focused, when you want to take a break. I feel like with this, it's either you like it or you hate it but there's no harm in trying it once, right? But yeah, that's gonna be resource number five. It's called Toggle Tracker or just a timer on your phone. So I'm just gonna throw this bonus one in here because I didn't know where else to talk about it. Like I didn't wanna make a separate video for it, but it's kind of related to school. It's just not like a Chrome or a website or anything. It's an application because it's back to school and you might be watching this and you're like, oh, this is useful. I don't know. I, I learned this from my brother, right? So I'm just, I don't know where else you can find this. I'm putting it here in case it's useful for you. I personally take notes on my iPad. I know a lot of people do, but I also take notes on my laptop in class. Like some professors speak so quickly that I don't have enough time to write or I just don't feel like writing. Like my hand hurts, I'm lazy. I don't know, there's a lot of reasons why you would just rather type your notes one day. And most of my props use slides. So this is specifically for people who take notes on slides by like annotating them. And it has nothing to do with like handwriting. Cause yeah, I don't know, like maybe you don't like your handwriting, okay? Maybe it's not legible, maybe it takes too long, maybe it's slow, maybe, I don't know. You, there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to type instead. And so I'm just gonna put this here. It's an application called PDF Exchange Editor. I know there are a lot of PDF editors that are out there. This is just the one I've used and I like. I know some of the other like popular ones are, people just use Adobe, I think it's called Acrobat or OneNote. I really dislike OneNote. <laughs> I've tried it. I gave it like a really good shot, but I just I couldn't get into it But I'm sure there are other ones out there that people use that are great But I just I tried this I really liked it and I kept going with it So yeah, I'm just gonna show you guys why I like this and how I personally use it But I want to do it quickly and I think the best way to do it is just to show you one of my older notes You can see how I like to use it and why I like it. Okay, let's do an anatomy lecture <laughs> So this is one of my old lectures that I've taken notes on and this is what the interface looks like So you have all these like annotating features that you can use. There's a text box, call out, and just like, you know, typical stuff. Their comment is called sticky notes. You have like lines, arrows, and different shapes. You can use freehand pencils. I think you could probably use this with like a tablet laptop, but I haven't used it, so I'm not recommending it for that. I just, I don't know how it works. You can also set um, keyboard shortcuts. I have S for sticky notes, and you can just click anywhere and I'll create a note. I have H for highlight, U for underline, A for arrow, in case I want to point something out. You can change the color, it's customizable, you know, can, for the sticky notes, you can also set the, the font that's inside, font size, everything. And then, oh, there's also text boxes. So that's what this is. Just to go and show you how I use this, basically. You can add text boxes in the slides to have like the stuff the professor's saying that wasn't on the slide that's not really related to anything. Or here, like this was related to the title and just connective tissue in general, so I put it here. And then this is like relating to this point, so I put it here, kind of thing. They have these like comments or sticky notes where you can link it to a point on the slide. And these you can move around anywhere on the screen, on the like right or left side of the slide or even on the slide. And the reason I like this is because I can put this here and I can expand it. And basically I have a whole page next to my slide where I can write all the important notes relating to the slide or this point here. And I can do that on either side. And then also if for example, I want to write something specific to like, for example, mature connective tissue, I can just like mature and then double click it. And then I have a box relating to what I highlighted and I can just write something very specific to that. So it's very like, I don't know if you would call it directional, but I can say like relating to this specific part of the slide, which is what I like to do when I do handwritten notes. It basically recreates my ideal handwritten notes in digital format which is why I really like it and I also like the freedom to move these around and organize them one of the main reasons I like this is because I like to be able to look at the slide just like a holistic view and see and know that I can see everything relating to that slide that I should know and if I'm studying I'm gonna study off of the slides because everything's already there I don't like rewriting what I will do is I will like review memorize and then put it aside and write out on like a blank piece of paper everything I can remember and then compare and point out the things that I forgot but I won't make like specifically notes to study off of it's just it works it <laughs> makes sense and it does everything I need it to which makes it perfect yeah I don't know if any of that made sense but if you want to try it out it's free it'll be linked and if you have any questions let me know um, I know I did when I first started I didn't know where everything was so let me know if you have any questions in the comments or something and I will answer for sure Cross. And that's basically everything. I mean, it's top five resources plus one little bonus one. And um, yeah, I hope you guys found at least one of them helpful. Uh, you found something new, something you already knew you liked, but you found a different use for it. I don't know. I hope it was helpful. <laughs> it's 
kind of the whole point of the video. <laughs> and maybe if you have like another app or website or extension or something that you personally use that you think would be helpful, it's like similar or something, or you think it's like life changing, maybe leave it in the comments so other people can also see it. Like if someone's interested and they scroll down, they have, you know, some helpful comments to look at. And I think that's kind of like the beauty of these kind of videos. Like you learn something from the video, but there's also so many like nice and helpful people in the comments that are providing additional stuff. So if you know something that I maybe hadn't thought about, maybe you can add in there. Or, you know, if you want to see something else, if you want to, you know, so yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. And if you made it this far, thank you again. <laughs> I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.